all kinds of products, all kinds of wonderful things for you to partake in here at Black and No Bells. We want you to come on down. It is just about the bottom of the hour, so that means we need to break and pay a few bills, but we will be right back on the other side with more great news, information, music, and culture on 900 AM WURD. Don't go anywhere. music you hear so much of what influenced him as an artist in terms of blues, in terms of funk, in terms of jazz, and that is black music. That is exactly who we are culturally as a people. But, of course, in terms of bringing all of that together, Chuck did that in a very unique way. The reason why the music is called Go-Go is because people said that infectious percussion, the blackness that is the underground, the underpinning of that music, said it goes on and on and on. So that's why it's Go-Go. It keeps going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny. So we are going to a short track that sort of explains that. It is his redo of the Fats Wallet tune, It Don't Mean a Thing If It Ain't Got That Swing. In Chuck Brown's version, he said it don't mean a thing if it don't got the go-go swing. So that is our power-up song of the day. Chuck Brown, It Don't Mean a Thing, here on WURD. what he left behind. So my recommendation is that Mayor Vincent Gray of D.C. create a Chuck Brown Memorial Parade where he gets together all of these fabulous musicians who have been influenced by people like Chuck Brown and they take go-go through the streets of D.C. and march up and down in a kind of second line celebration of his life and his legacy. And hopefully if Mayor Gray hears me and decides to uh, move forward with that idea that it will catch on in other major cities around, around the country because Lord knows that when our cultural icons pass, we don't want to be in mourning. We want to remember the life that they gave us through their writings, through their teachings, through their music, whatever it was that their particular artistic discipline was. And the idea that we could walk through the streets, march through the streets, and celebrate them in some way is something that I think most of us can get with. So hopefully it will be a trend that will continue to spread through our community in many ways. And as we are here at our broadcast table at Black and Nobel Book, Store, we have been joined by some friends of the station and some really important people in today's concept of cash mobbing. For those of you who are just tuning into the program, we are broadcasting live from Black and Nobel Bookstore in Broad and Erie with the concept of cash mobbing that was introduced to us by entrepreneur George Frazier who said that in our vetted businesses within the black community, when we talk about keeping our dollars brown and being able to support the businesses that exist within our community, we also need to support those businesses who have shown time and time again that they can not only provide exemplary customer service, they don't do it begrudgingly, they welcome us into their venues, they understand the value that we're bringing with our dollars and, and provide the kind of service that makes us want to be repeat customers, but they can also handle the volume. There are some businesses that are just getting off the ground and cannot necessarily handle a big influx of new business and continued support, and we want to continue to support their growth but we also want to support those businesses who've been around, who've shown they can handle it, and Black and Nobel is definitely one of those institutions. So that is why we are broadcasting live here today to support them and encouraging you to come down with at least $20 that you can spend on products here in this building that will help continue the longevity of this wonderful institution. And here at our table right now, we have one of our frequent flyers, as we like to call him, who is always in the community supporting positive of causes and always calling into the station to share great information and support what we do on 900 AM WURD. So please welcome Brother Ron to the microphone. Okay, I'm glad to be here and I'm glad to be inside this pyramid <laughs> with you, the living, the living uh, curator somewhat on WURD. It is very important, as you said, that we support businesses like this that have a track record of consistency 
providing community service or anything that you want, you can get in this place here. But the most important thing, when I look at this business that sit in North Philadelphia, usually you hear places, uh, vineyards where they have businesses, Second Street, or places like that. But in the heart of Philadelphia, we have a pyramid that can take you, even if you never go to Africa, certainly hope you will take that trip, but you can come here and get all this wonderful, wonderful historical information. Once again, it, it's so important, it's good that we say, well, uh, Chinese, they support one another. It's not what they say, it's what we do. And this is why WRG is saying yes, uh, we're in the, out in the community and doing things like that. But dollars are very important. So we can talk all the things that we want, but we're not putting our dollars in a place like here or, or on a road. On Erie Avenue, this business here, then we're just doing we're this, we're this, this talking. The most, important, the most important thing, when I look at businesses that my age, have certainly, uh, that certainly was very, was able to uh, flourish and move forward in the past because they had the community support. And once, once we stop supporting our, our businesses in our community, we see the results of it. But you can start right today and take a hold of it at $20, $20 over and say, we're going to support this business here. We're going to, we're going to support whatever WID have because it's in the best interest of the community. And this would be money well spent. Anything that WRD uh, uh, partake in, it is money well spent, time well spent. And for the first time in this city, for quite for, for so many years, that once again we have a, a, a owner, owner management that have the conscience of the community. The least we can do is come out and spend our dollars. It saddens me when I go downtown and I see people down there buying, and, and the schedule is spending their money down downtown and not coming in places like this. Anymore. And I say this to you, ladies and gentlemen, very respectfully, it is, it is a reflection of our mentality. And I'm gonna close with this, and I say to this lady, uh, Miss Stephanie, uh, it is actually Washington's laws for us to have such a wonderful person uh, in Philadelphia working on WRD, but they're, going, they're passing a law the way I understand it in Washington, D.C. And you have people like her who never to, uh, let, allow her to uh, migrate from Washington to Philadelphia. <laughs> so we just glad that we are, uh, that you're here and we're going to support. One other thing, when I look at the business, this business here, they have a gentleman up here that has been certainly involved with WRD, and the gentleman name is Brother Ryan. He's the, the guy to do the neck, the indie, the yes, indigenous person. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rock, well, yeah yes, yes, man. And this is this goes to show you that you can come in here, you can get things made to your whatever you want to your for your mother or whoever. You can get these things made. And so, once again, my cup just running over, and I'm glad that I am living in a time where I, where I see people like yourself and is it, supporting our businesses. And I say to you, if you don't support your business and you talk about it then your conscience will let you know that it has been nothing but talk. And we certainly hope if you're not supporting our black businesses and this business, that your conscience will bother you. Thank you, Miss. Well, no, I can't let you off that easy because you come in here early on a Saturday, you got your fresh haircut, you're wearing your bright, sunshiny yellow. So you, you, look, you look like you're ready for the weekend. But I know that whenever you're out, not only are you supporting WURD's causes, but you are also out in our community encouraging people to be involved. And before we brought you on the microphone, you were telling me about your voter registration effort. What other kinds of civic action is going on in the city this weekend that we need to be aware of or coming up in the upcoming Week. Well, uh, the upcoming week, we're certainly going to have other people. I know the senator is going to give a, uh, she had an event uh, today on uh, Lehigh Avenue where about us uh, getting people records Record expunged. Yes. So it's constantly representatives are doing, uh, uh, out in the community doing things. And I'm quite sure the senator is going to be making an announcement on WID to, to the process. And she's going to have what we call, we're going on tour through Philadelphia to encourage the voter ID uh, uh, voter ID registration to prepare. Yeah. Because as you know, September the 24th is the last date that you can prepare yourself to vote in this process. And I, uh, and the senator and myself and many others, we always like to say to the people, the die have already been cast with the other party saying what they want to do in cutbacks. A man my age, I am affected by it. They're talking about our social security, they're talking about Medicare, they're talking about all these things. And these people will actually do these things if we do not partake 
in this process. And we know that the uh, President Obama, the way I understand it, President Obama had one billion dollars in his political war chest. The, the Republican Party is getting ready to put something, eight million dollars, eight billion dollars into their political war chest. This is how important that they know it is that we can be in control of this country and serve the rich people and not the, uh, the citizens of this country. I go as far as to say, man, I think we have a responsibility and an obligation to partake in our process anytime they're talking about cutbacks that's going to affect generations yet to come. President Obama's going to be all right. If he loses, we certainly hope that he wins. But if he loses, he's going to be all right. But the policies that's going to follow this will be devastating. So we certainly hope that those persons that can hear me, please, uh, you representatives, take ads out on WID. That's one way that you can reach people. The second thing is uh, uh, be more involved in your community, you representatives. I think you have a kind of, uh, obligation and a responsibility because you have already made history. You people that are serving now, you've already made history. And uh, the least that you can do is give back and be visible amongst your people and to encourage, number one, education and your program that you had on the other day and talking about education. My opinion is that it should not be the way that it is in reference to the political government of this city, city council, your state, your, your state representatives, and the people are not saying anything. That's complacency. That is complacency. And I say to you, my beloveds, if, you, if, if, if you're not out here representing your family and your children and other people's children, we're going to feel, the, we're going to feel the, 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 the effect of that in years to come. Ryan is not talking down to you. We've been very blessed. Certainly we can give back for the next generation. We can talk about Malcolm X, what he said, and all Dr. King and all those persons. But it's what we do that we will make a difference. And I was, I, Close down with that. Absolutely. My cup running over. Thank, Thank you, Brother Ron. Thank you for coming down and sharing yes. that information with us. Yes. And to piggyback on what he said, SRC member Lorraine Carey also said, as chairperson of the Security uh, Committee for the School Reform Commission, said that we have gotten in the state with our schools. We have gotten in the state that we are in now with issues of security, with issues of funding, specifically because there are, uh, is a, a large portion of our community that always looked at this issue as being those people's children other people's children instead of our children. When we think of all of the children of this city as our own, then the responsibility for what we need to do becomes that much greater because it's personal. We understand that unless you have a personal stake in what you do, we have a tendency to brush it off and act like it's unimportant. But understanding that this school budget issue is ours, not theirs, but ours. Safety in our city, whether we're talking about just generally walking up and down the street or the issue that we've been talking about with Representative our Councilman Curtis Jones about witness protection in our city. It's not them, it's us. And when we begin to personalize these issues in that way, we know that we'll be empowered to make a difference. So that's getting you up and motivated on this Saturday. It's not just about the music and not just about the other things that we provide for you as a part of this station, but it's also about the information and that civic responsibility that we want to continue to drill into you, lovingly of course but continue to provide for you on the station. We are also joined here at Black and Nobel by one of the organizers of today's Cash Mob event, and specifically one of the ladies who has been working very vigorously around the city to improve this idea of what we understand as professional networking to a place where it is helping to support all different kinds of black businesses around the city of Philadelphia. Wanda Davis, welcome to the WURD table and to Black and Nobel today. Well, thank you, thank you. It's always a pleasure to be here. And, you know, Dr. Wayne Dyer says, if you change the, the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And that's what we have to do. And as I take a look at things and when I watch things change, then I like to be in the, in the company or I like to advocate or I like to, to move parallel with those things, people and places that are shifting the paradigm for thinking like I'm thinking. And WURD is one of those stations, and Black and Nobel is one of those proprietors. So I'm, I'm glad, I'm blessed to be here today, getting my voice back, you know, just overcoming um, being under the weather. Yes. And But I, I want to say, taking back to what you just said before I came on, 
about having a stake in what we do. On the last election day, April 24th, I was very, um, I had very, uh, a very big opinion about um, vouchers and about public schools. And, and someone said to me, well, why, why are you worried about it? You shouldn't worry about it. And this was a, a former elected official. You shouldn't worry about it. Didn't you just say your child was going to Penn Charter? And you know what? I am so blessed that my child was going to Penn Charter, Charter William Penn Charter, the first school, private school. But I said, yes, but what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. And we should be concerned about all of the children, people in Philadelphia. My son has never been a public school, but I've always been an advocate for those things that are right. Let's face it, if it's not my son, then we have to worry about the next child down the street, you know, the next young lady around the corner. Why do we have to hear about 21 years old being shot on their porches? You know, apparently someone who did do that, either they, they may have been a public school product or someone who did not finish public school. So I just want to say that you're absolutely right. It's not just about us. You know, it's about justice and it's about everybody. Indeed, and with the, the positive spend that we have on today, encouraging people to come here to Black and Nobel with at least $20 and to spend it within the context of this wonderful establishment. This is not the only thing that you have going on tonight that is supporting Black business. So talk a little bit about the complexion of the day and why not only should they come down to the bookstore, but there is this whole cash mob concept that we are encouraging today. Also includes an after party. It's the weekend. We know that people want to party and you've already included that component in what we're doing today. Absolutely. Well, um, we're in one of seven cities, and as of our um, national conversation last night, Philadelphia was number two in terms of the registration of those that were going to participate. So let me first say I'm excited about that. And in each city, there, after the cash mob, which is, like you said, technically four to seven, there's going to be what we call a mob mixer. And when we do this, mind you, this is the first time, this is the first one, it's a social experiment, you know, started by Maggie Anderson and her husband, the empowerment experiment, um, in addition to FraserNet, George C. Fraser, and local business owners. And those business owners that that pertains to here in the city of Philadelphia is Wanda Davis, myself, of Unique Productions and Prosperity, and of course, Earl Harvey, um, my success net partner, who is the publisher of the Black Professionals News and been a business advocate for in publishing for over 12 years. So after here in Philadelphia, we're going to be mob mixing at Champagne Cafe. Many of us go way back with Champagne. So on Shelton Avenue, 21 East Shelton to be exact, um, Philadelphia near Germantown and Shelton. And if you ask, um, out of all of the places in the city, how did you decide to pick who or what you pick? Well, one of the things that make it easier, which is why it's important to support one another, is because Champagne, Brenda and George Stovell, they buy ads in the Black Professional News. Uh, they support Wanda Davis Unique Productions. You know, I've had events there. You know, they've been generous in, in their support and what they, you know, the, what they donated or what they brought to the table. So this is our way of giving back. And Earl said, well, hey, Wanda, let, let's do, let's start with champagne. They buy ads in the beer. Not that anyone else does it. But, and again, I mentioned yesterday on the station, I even reached out to the Chamber of Commerce. And it's not easy looking for a, a business that could hold, have a large space that might be able to be uh, productively mobbed and not the opposite. Um, so that we would have some beautiful pics and not anything cat catastrophic. Um, but a, a lot of us don't um, invest, we don't even invest in ourselves. When you look at health, wealth, and literature, which is what Black and Noble is known for, it's not just about coming down and spending $19.95 or a minimum of $20 to support Black and Nobel. It's about what you're going to invest in yourself. Um, I've been bringing George Fraser, Earl and I have been bringing George Fraser since October. He actually brought him in 2000 for the first time. And a lot of times I invite people out to events. You are going to be sponsoring a mentoring event coming up. Who's mentoring black children? And inmates, athletes, addicts, or you. And we'll get into that later. But I tell people, I don't just invite people because I want them to support me. I invite them because I know when they get there, it's going to be something for them and something that they take away with them. 
and the last time when Lisa Nichols came of The Secret, The Law of Attraction, I got so many phone calls, I got so many texts, I got so many thank yous. And when she called into the station, she said, I saw Wanda, thank you for bringing me for only $10. People spend a minimum of $360. You know, and George Frazier, people spend $13,000 an hour to hear that man. You know, but unfortunately, um, some of us and a lot of us, you know, we buy what we want and we beg for what we need. It, it, it's sad that we have to literally shove information, things that we need, down some of our throats. You know, we sometimes hit ourselves upside the head, you know, to get that includes me. I'm, I'm not exempt. I mean, we're, we're all growing, growing through that process. And part, of, and part of how we start, the whole idea of investing in ourselves, both financially and culturally, enriching ourselves, can begin with twenty dollars today here at Black and Nobel. We've got a break for. We've got. Oh no, we don't. Oh good. So we're going to continue to talk. Why not? I'm excited now. Okay, so. <laughs> So that is part of the whole idea of, of cash mobbing. And let's talk a little bit more about the sort of growth of this process. Because sometimes people speak in the abstract about networking, yes. right? There is a there's an idea that preparing an elevator speech, which means that if you happen to run into somebody that had all the money and all the influence that you would need to get your idea off the ground, if you were in an elevator with them, somewhere in that two minutes, you should be able to give them a capsule of what your business is and why they should invest, why they should want to know you more. People have that idea, but they don't really have a, a strong concept of what long-term networking means. And to me, one of the best examples we have of that is how Black and Nobel came to be, starting from an entrepreneurial stand on the corner to growing into one space, then to growing into the space that we have now that is the largest space they've occupied to be able to bring us this cultural enrichment that exists all along the walls in this bookstore. Talk to people about the necessity for understanding what networking really means and how success that helps to develop that in people who are just growing in that awareness. Well, first of all, the phrase that George so well coined and that you'll hear me repeat often, and I'm a person of quotes, you know that I happen to be poetic as well, but your network helps determine your network. And when it comes to networking, the, the law of attraction says when you give, you automatically receive. So if you network to give, you'll automatically get. But just having relationships, just being able to connect with people is what really pulls things together. If you can be someone who could be the richest person in the world, could write a check for with 10 zeros, but if it's something that you need and you don't know that person who has what you need and you don't know anybody that knows that person that has what you need, right. then you may not get what you need regardless of how many zeros you can write. You know, I, I, I am blessed and I know a lot of people that network that all they have to do is pick up a telephone and get what it is that they need. And SuccessNet, George Fraser actually publishes a book um, called SuccessNet. I was actually in the first publication in 1999 when my business was Two Nice Productions when I lived in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is where I met and networked with George when a hundred black men brought him to, to Charlotte. And it's a listing of those who are in business and, and within the network. So George, I, to me, is like the Oprah. You know, some people, everybody wants to go on Oprah's show. Everybody wants to, you know, go on Tom Jordan's show. Depending on where you are, what you do, if you, if you need an audience to talk, everybody wants to get have a, a, a something to say on WURD. There's so many times, there's never time that I get off the air with URD, whether it's five minutes, two minutes, or 15 minutes, and I've gotten a text, or I've gotten a phone call, you know, I'll be there, or, you know, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> or, it, so, it, networking and relationships are very important. And when I thought about bringing George here, again, when we talk about networking, I was doing everything by myself, and when I orchestrated it, I called, I said, I'm a responsible. I went around and I went to 
quite a few radio stations. Sometimes people don't get it when they need to get it. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's too bad. <laughs> and I reached out, Earl Harvey came to mind. I remember when I brought Les Brown to start a foundation, um, I did some advertising with Earl, and Earl also did some, gave me some income services. So I contacted Earl and said, hey Earl, bringing George Fraser to town, would you, would you be my sponsor? You know, would you, would you sponsor the, the event? I said, I'm doing it all by myself. Everything is out of pocket. Earl did not hesitate. He did not think twice. He did not blink twice. And he said, sure. Come to find later, as as divine intervention would have it, Earl first or George, as I mentioned earlier, in 2000. And then here we would be coming back around in 2011 during Minority Enterprise Business Week when we finally pulled, pulled it off and brought him here. So we brought him in October, then we brought him back in November, December, and he said to me in October, George said to me, Wanda, you know, you should, you should think about changing the name to SuccessNet. I said to myself, I'll change the name, but we'll certainly add it. So here, here we are today. You know, we have our next success net coming up in June. But when he came up with this cash mob idea, because Earl and I networked to give, um, and we were people in the ground in Philadelphia, he contacted us and said, hey, what do you think about this idea of cash mob? And you remember he introduced it on the station. Yes. You know, we went online and Google. Earl gave you some excellent history yesterday. And so it started out with an initiative in five cities and then seven cities because that's where he had people on the ground. This is strictly a volunteer effort. I love my people. I love my community. You know, it's it's what I do. It's what it's what people call your passion or your calling, what you would do for free. Right. So now I'm working on how to monetize that. Not this particular event, and that's the other thing that George Fraser and Fraser Net does. They have he has the largest African American professional network in the country. So I said I, I would there were certain things that I wanted to be able to have and if it was nothing but being listed in, in that that book or have one of those books no matter where you go, if you want a confidence or a sense of, oh, I need this done, oh and I need a mechanic at the last minute, look through, pull out your guide. That's what people do, but people don't go to the white pages and the yellow pages anymore unless they absolutely have to. What do they do? They call me all the time. Wanda, where's Wanda yet? Wanda, I need a mechanic. Right. Wanda, don't you know somebody that sings? What? Who, where can I get a reasonable DJ or where can I get a last minute carpet shampoo from? Right. That's networking. Yeah. That's relationships. And people do business with people that they like and they love. Absolutely. And and who give good business and repeated business. I happen to have a, a friend I worked with who was an attorney. And I, I've been in a, a couple of lawsuits. I know my rights. And there have been one or two times where the um, in a deposition, you know, they may have said, uh, asked a question or made some insinuation as to why I use the same attorney. Well, like anybody else. When you get good service, what do you do? You come back again. That's right. What are you going to switch or change for? But it's it's about providing good products and services. It's about being in business and not business. You see my 11 year old executive assistant. I was going to say, and I wanted I wanted you to speak to that as well because oh, he in, in, the in this in this process though one of the things that we always talk mm -hmm. about is that the information cannot stay among one group of people. Absolutely. It has to be able to be passed down and this wisdom that we're gaining from the businesses that, that have endured and also expire, inspiring in our young people not only that entrepreneurial spirit but recognizing a good business and being able to support them as well with their allowances, with the little money that they make in their private businesses, whatever the situation may be. And I was going to say that your son came in with you ready to be your assistant clearly and this is obviously something that you've been doing with him as, as much as you can. Talk about this relationship, what you have been teaching the next generation through your son about what it means to be an entrepreneur. Absolutely. And my son is going to be a, a better entrepreneur and a faster entrepreneur than I was. Because my son is, is a little more conscious. Um, he's going to be more conscious at his age. And he he, he, saves, he saves money. And yes, he's compassionate, but he's more business than he is compassion. If, if I am dead broke, I can always end up in his room in one of his banks <laughs> to find 
what I need, and then he'll come back and remind me what I owe him. <laughs> he's, he's sitting, he's sitting in the chair smiling, so you can tell that mommy is telling the truth right now. <laughs> I, I, I know he is. I know he is. And and I, I try to explain the importance to him the best way I can. And for instance, on Mother's Day, I was stressing and struggling because Saturday I went to, to took his his sister took him to his sister and I thought I was leaving them and then I took him to the movies but I spoke with the owner of uh, 7135 October Gallery yes Mercer. yes and he you know he spoke to my son again and we were talking about well you know he plays the keyboard and then he's, my son had an opportunity to open for Clifton Davis and he was going to pay him now nice. my son wanted to play <laughs> and I woke up Sunday morning stressing trying to figure out how to get him there and, and then he didn't really want to go so I didn't push myself and I said okay why well, are you doing the right thing but don't shove it down his throat but it's a good opportunity it will be money and he didn't get the opportunity to do it and he's he's, he's probably upset now kicking himself and he's going to kick me because he said mommy you should have made me but you know I have to let him be a child right. but I also try to let him know what's important and about networking and and he knows it he knows every politician there is he knows all the business people don't say nothing about Earl Harvey and the black professionals news if you if, if it's wrong or if you need to be corrected or straightened out Elijah Kumail Davis will do so. <laughs> and that, as a matter of fact, I think I just turned and saw my success net partner and cash my partner Earl Hart. Yes. So I'd like to take a break. I was going to say, well, well, Troy, if you could come over, what we'll do is we'll do a little musical interlude and then we'll switch off. And as we are doing that, I want to go back to the quotes of uh, Malcolm X. As we know, we are celebrating Malcolm X's birthday today and there's so much, there's so much rich content from the speeches that he left us over the years. And I want to go to one about the importance of supporting our own community. It says, when you go to a church and you see the pastor of that church with a philosophy and a program that's designed to bring black people together and elevate black people, join that church. If you see where the NAACP is preaching and practicing that which is designed to make black nationalism materialize, join the NAACP. Join any kind of organization, civic, religious, fraternal, political, or otherwise, that's based on lifting the black man up and making him master of his own community. The words of Malcolm X, and now we're going to go to the music of Queen Latifah, Troop, and the OJs. From the soundtrack of New Jack City, we want to remind you that the object of today is cash mobbing here at Black and Nobel Bookstore. So, we're going to a mashup of the songs for the love of money and living for the city, and we're going to come back on the other side with more great news and information. Here on 900 AM WURD, this is Stephanie Renee with a special weekend edition of what we call my mid-morning mojo, even though it's early afternoon here on a beautiful, crisp, and bright Saturday afternoon where we are cash mobbing at the encouragement of Wanda Davis, of course the, the, the progenitor of the idea, George Fraser, but also we just finished hearing from Wanda Davis and we are now joined on the microphone by Earl Harvey of Black Professional News. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having us here. Thank you all for being here. You know, these kind of events cannot go on without WID being here. Okay, we're talking about entrepreneurship today, we're talking about self-empowerment, economic development. You know, the so to have them be a partner with this radio station in the community, and now partnering with us, I cannot tell you how much it means to me and how much it means to the community. Yes, indeed. Well, we appreciate that, and we thank you for making some time today to come down and join us here on our live broadcast. We had a great time on the air yesterday introducing this concept, making sure that our w, uh, URD listeners were going to come out and support this. And while I'm on that moment, I do want to take a moment to wish a happy birthday to Barbara Aikens, who is one of our 990 members of the station, who is here and is always a very ardent supporter of everything that we do. I'm wearing my 990 t-shirt, and we thank her for taking time out on her birthday to come down and support the Cash Mile today. Just a beautiful, beautiful coming together of our community. And Earl, you take time through your publication to help increase this idea that we understand that Wanda so eloquently defined for us of networking, what it means for us to support businesses. Let's talk a little bit about the history of your publication and why entrepreneurs in our listening audience who are thinking 
thinking about different ways for them to expand their audience, not only in terms of the consumer patronage, but also business to business kinds of relationships that can help them expand and grow. Why is it important for them to know about black professional news and what you can offer them? Well, I'm the former president of the National Alliance of Marketing Developers, NAMD. I was the Philly chapter president and the national president. And our organization was founded by the first group of African Americans in a corporate America. And these brothers at the time, there were no sisters at that time, these brothers worked for some of the largest consumer products companies in the world. We're talking the beverage companies, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, uh, Budweiser, uh, Procter & Gamble. So these are huge companies. And their mission was to be a liaison between the black consumer market and corporate America. So these gentlemen actually founded the whole concept of the black consumer market that we call today. And ethnic marketing, and segmented marketing, all those terms that we use, these guys did it. And over the course of time, there were opportunities that developed with these relationships with corporate America for black businesses to become part of that relationship. Ebony Magazine came to the brothers that started NAMD, John, uh, Mr. Johnson, yes. and said, look, I have an idea for a lifestyle publication for the black community, and I need advertising support. And these gentlemen went to corporate America, and they encouraged corporate America to advertise in Ebony Magazine. And these are the kind of successful black enterprise. These are the kind of people that we're talking about who actually forged that relationship to bring corporate America to the black consumer market. Now, if you look at the development of the African American community, a lot of the businesses that we had before integration in black communities, we had every single type of business that you can imagine in our black community. Because we had no choice. We had no choice. We weren't allowed to go anywhere else. Right. When we talk about economic development, the black communities were thriving and flourishing before the civil rights movement. And people lost sight of what the civil rights movement was all about. It was about the right to have access to eat at Woolworths. Not to get the right to do it and then leave the black community and eat only at Woolworths. You see? So when you start talking about priorities in our communities and how our dollars are now disproportionately being spent outside of our communities and give it to people who do not look like us, then you understand the need now after 50 or 60 years of civil rights movement to re-engage our communities and realize that, hey, you know, we kind of lost the mission when we start realizing that the general market was where we were supposed to be spending our dollars. Right. And our businesses suffered, as we thought our community suffered, our neighborhood suffered, and a lot of the revitalization that's going on right now with George Frazier and Maggie Anderson is we're trying to recreate that feeling that we had back before when we had to support our own businesses. And, and that's where we are right now. And what you're saying right now is so important that I think we sometimes lose sight of. The whole idea that we have movements that go on within our community that are supposed to take us to a new level of consciousness and understanding. And what people don't understand, and what we seem to have lost sight of is the idea of the continuity of that concept. We don't fight for something and then just throw our hands up and let it run away or roll down the hill. We have to hold that those principles in our spirits and continue them on an ongoing basis. So what yes. you're saying... We got about, lost. Yeah, we did. We got lost. We, we, in the, and a lot of people say in the me 80s yeah. that, you know, I'm, I'm a child of the 70s. So the whole idea of the fact that right after we lost so many of our exemplars and our leaders of the civil rights movement was when we started to reap the benefits of all of that struggle. And so in those 70s, people were getting those good government jobs, and they were going into corporate America, corporate America yeah. and they were doing all of these things. And then once they achieved what they thought was a solid middle class, then for the next generation, for my generation, there weren't these ongoing conversations about what that struggle meant and what your identity meant within the context of this larger society and how you were supposed to function as the next generation that was maintaining the gains that were gained during that period that allowed us to have that prosperity. And it's funny too, and the sad part about it, if you look at what's happening right now, we're talking about going from circle here now, okay? We've had the rise, the fall, the rise, the fall, the rise. Now we're kind of trying to find out where we are right now in this new economy. Yes. We're in a new place. Yes, we are. And the statistics is showing, um, as of the last census, the largest number of businesses started by an ethnic group in the last five years for black-owned businesses. Okay? We have been forced by the current economic times in many instances to start our own businesses, our own consulting firms, because we are being displaced at a disproportional amount. 
when it comes to people losing their job. So as a matter of survival, you know, we're going back to the old school saying we got to roll up our sleeves and do this thing for ourselves. Yeah, I was going to say, and as I joked uh, earlier that uh, with Ron, that I'm kind of uh, with Tyson, that I'm typified as a backpacking granola kind of black person. I heard you. Right? Uh, one of the statistics that I heard that was very encouraging is that with this resurgence in naturalness that we are experiencing within our community, that it has created quite an entrepreneurial opportunity for the makers of hair care, for the makers of skin care, some of the other things where we've been talking in the past, where we've been spending billions of dollars that have been flowing out of our community. Now, the whole idea of black beauty and healthcare is coming back to our community, you know, in, in a way because of this new awareness and growing, as you're saying, trying to find ways to make this happen within the context of our economy. There is clearly a segment of our population that's going, hmm, maybe the, the, the weave habit that I've had for years and years and years is something that I can sustain while I'm in between jobs. So I'm going to get to know my natural hair. And in that process, we're now supporting more black business that is creating the products that will allow us to do that. Sometimes we don't come to a pretty girl, I don't think. No. You know, sometimes we get backdoored <laughs> into doing the right thing by the conditions that surround us. And so what you're saying is that we need to be very aware of the gains that were made pre-integration. And we also need to be conscious of now that we are in a situation where we find ourselves asking a lot more questions about how can we sustain this lifestyle, how can we get a lifestyle that's comparable to what our parents or our grandparents had, that we might end up backdooring ourselves into a new level of financial consciousness that's going to benefit us in the long run. Yeah, you know, some things happen by accident. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's reality, okay? Right. Uh, we consider losing jobs and being displaced as the worst thing that could happen to us um, as professionals. But whenever there's... Uh, any kind of situations that are adverse, a lot of times opportunity comes out of those situations. So, you know, we've always been told to keep our eyes on the prize, okay? We don't have nowhere to go but up, okay? So, uh, if you look at what's happening in this new economy, and everybody's trying to figure this new thing out, and people keep saying, well, things are going to change and get better again. You know what I think? We are where we are, okay? Those days that considered the good old days, the heyday, those days are over, and they're probably never going to come back. So let's figure out ways that we can survive now with this new context. And that's one of the things I've been using my newspaper for, the Black Professional News, to be an advocate, you know, for opportunities, to be an advocate for networking and relationship building. And knowing that all we really have at the end of the day as a community is each other, I think we got away from that as well. Right. And if you look at what's happening in this whole new social networking environment, the people are in Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. As I have my Facebook page open right now. And, and you I look up at them 2,000 <laughs> friends that you have, but you don't have a clue who they are. <laughs> okay? But you're clicking on them, call them your friend. And if you need a kidney, you better call a family member, honey, because that ain't <laughs> Now, one of the people on that list is going to run up and say, I'm your friend on Facebook, God, okay? Right. You know how you're going to get a kidney? Old-fashioned relationships. Yes. Okay? And that's what we're getting back to. We're going back to black. Yeah. And we're going back to old school, face-to-face. -face. Let's touch each other. Let's feel each other. Let's get to know each other. Not live in this virtual environment that we call social media. It's all about knowing people but not knowing them. Mm -hmm. Okay? And just kind of going back to basics. So that's what Ryan and I have been focusing on. You know, we realize there's been a disconnect in you know, the last five or ten years. And we got to take it back to the old school. This is, this is old, good old-fashioned survival instincts right now. Yep, indeed. And so tell people now, for all of those folks who go, I've been under a rock somewhere, and I don't know why I have not advertised my business in Black Professional News. I don't know why. I don't know about this publication. Tell them. Tell all the entrepreneurs and the, the folks that are trying to get these contracts with other businesses in the city how to get in touch with you so that they can build their network the right way. Sure. I, I knew that it was actually started. Um, I said it was an offshoot of NANT originally, but... Uh, our mission was really to provide uh, an advertising and marketing entree for small business owners to get their businesses off the ground. So many small businesses need marketing and advertising, and they just can't afford to pay for it at the prevailing rates. Because they is an expensive bother that. So we decided to put together an affordable medium where they could advertise. I mean, our ad started low as $35 for a business card ad, and you're reaching 10,000 people per month with a minimum investment like that. So um, uh, you can absolutely go to my website, www.earlharvey.com, -E -E and you can click on the Black Professionals News on our website. 
uh, Wanda Davis and I will be promoting networking events for the rest of the year. You know, you all can stay tuned to WRD, who has lovingly volunteered to be one of our sponsors, media partners in this. So you, know, you go and stay tuned to WRD, you're going to know what's going on. Right. And uh, just come out and meet us face to face. You know, you can go online and read our paper, like I said, EarlHarvey.com. But we have 50 locations all over the city where you get a free copy. Um, so we just have a lot of ways that we try to touch the community to get people engaged and just to help these small business owners because they need help. And by helping them, they will in turn help us. Absolutely. Well, I think.